our baby child. Yeah. Isn't she lovely? Oh. She's like a little dolly. She's so sweet. Anyway, best of luck with the competition. Uh, if you're a fan of exploring dreamscapes while you sleep, then listen up as it turns out that a new app has been unveiled that can influence thoughts and imagery while you're dreaming. After downloading the program, which uh, you can select which path you'd like your dream to take, as during your sleep, the app will play a soundscape of a forest or a beach, which is, revealed, which is believed can aid in creating the perfect dream. So people do decide to, to use this. There's obviously going to be a deluge of people coming in going, oh, you'll never believe what I dreamt last night. Do you That's think... where I went last night. <laughs> Cheaper than a holiday. Do you think that people should keep their dreams to themselves, or, or do you think that it's important to reflect on them and, and think about them, what they po could possibly mean? I think it's really important. I, I, I have a pad at the side of my bed because I, I do dream, and, you know, when you wake up and you're actually shaking because it's been that vivid some of your dreams i write them down and within two weeks i know what that dream's usually been mm. about and it and it it's i think it's your brain dealing with the anxiety that is actually going on in your life at that time yeah. and mm. and i think we should listen a little bit more do to you, that bit coming you act, out you act on what you dream then. i do you make decisions based on Yes, you, I do. do you? But then I go on my gut feelings. I'm very in tune with myself. You, you see. are. Yes, but that's just because I write things down. At this, because sometimes I get lyrics and tunes right, okay. in my head and things, yeah, and I, yeah. I write the music down straight away when I've done that for when I'm wow. songwriting. And then you know, I don't know where they come from. I'm just very grateful they turn up. I don't. <laughs> you know, that's fine. I'm not questioning where it well, is. Well, they do say that some of the greatest songwriters have actually dreamt a, a melody yeah. or, or had something Ooh. drift in while they've been asleep. You see, I'm so you're among great. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm just asleep. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> do you know? I, I, don't, I don't think I would want to bore anybody with my dreams. I mean, to be quite honest with them, I can't really remember them because I'm too busy snoring at the time. So. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I think I'm quite a sort of spiritual person, really, and I'm a bit like kind of like you. I sort of like to know what they're about. But do you know, I don't. You know, what dreams I? I'm oh, sorry, I'm getting a bit giggly. But do you know, Rudy, Rudy dreams. Oh yeah, yeah, Rudy. Yes. I, I had a Rudy dream once when I went when I was working on Enders yeah. about somebody. Uh, and, no, I can't tell oh, you. Oh come on. No, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> Will you tell us? No, I won't. I'll just get really mad. Anyway, I could, I could, oh, oh, I'd like one about him. Well, we've all got one about him. No, but anyway, it was that kind of thing. But when I actually saw them, when I was working with them, oh, I was so embarrassed. I put my head down. I was like, sorry, Mr. Person. <laughs> it just gets a bit embarrassing. Well, Lord. Well, <laughs> well, <laughs> What are you asking? <laughs> well, well, that's what I was going to say. Do you know yeah. what I mean? If you see their winky woos in a dream, it's a bit weird, doesn't it? Yeah, really? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, I don't, I, I, as I say, I'm just asleep. Mm. <laughs> do you not, do you not I, remember you know, your I dreams? don't. And I, well, I, there's only... There's, there's a horrible one I have recently where I said something awful really publicly and I think that's anxiety probably to do with this show because I've, yeah. I've come close so many times to saying something that's so wrong. Or that's um, come out wrong well, it's come out, could yeah, be misconstrued. Yeah, I mean, yeah. this was so, so wrong. I mean, I had phone calls from people saying, how could you be so evil? I can't even say what it was. It was just that <laughs> awful. Um, but the other thing is, there were... Um, I was talking to Jane about this earlier. The, the most vivid dreams I've ever had, there were two. One straight after my granddad died. And it was, the, it was a dream where... He came to life, he, and he was saying, I didn't die. It's all a bad dream, and I'm really here, and you don't have to worry. I'm actually alive, and you don't have to cope with any of this. And I remember waking up crying because I knew it was a dream, mm. and I just wanted, with every inch of yeah. my being, for it to be the truth. And I was telling Jane this, and she said, you had, I had that with your dad. the same thing with my father, yeah. And, and it... it but it's you, comforting, would, though, isn't it? Yeah, but think? Jane says to me that it's it actually that he be. did come to me, possibly. Yeah. But, I mean, I don't know about any well, of that. Well, I, I honestly think... I, I mean, I, everybody thinks I'm a bit weird, but I just believe in something else after this. Yeah. And uh, that was my dad yeah. coming to me and saying, I'm fine. Don't worry, get on with your life, mm. I'll see you later. Well, if you look back through the, through the Bible or, or what have you, some people call them visions, mm -hmm. so, you know, some people call them dreams, and... and it, it, the same what, with my nan when she died. Yeah, who same are we to think? Same thing happened yeah, with can you, well. can you, my nan, exa the day afterwards, Gosh. it must be... I, I just thought it was like bereavement, just playing tricks on my mind, and it was all in my subconscious. But can you answer me this? We've got a pug puppy, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> It was nine and a half weeks old, and it dreams, all, and it's asleep. It's like that. <laughs> <laughs> its eyes are rolling around in its head, yeah. and it's but they're written bodies going like that. <laughs> and I'm thinking, what? It's only been on the planet nine and a half weeks. <gasps> what does it know about life to dream? I don't. I don't What's it dreaming of? Amy it just lies Charles, on um, DVD. DVD. <laughs> 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 
my dog does that, but he just lies on his side going... Whimpering and, 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 and running. running. Yeah, and running, running. But, running. But, catch that rabbit, catch but, that rabbit. But when you're yeah. so young... I know, isn't that lovely? It's that weird, sweet. Though. Well, that must tell you something when you watch a dog doing that, because it's obviously somewhere else, isn't it? Do you, you think it's reincarnated? Maybe it's no. Sherry's dog. No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that at all. I just think you're very blessed to have had that happen to you twice from two yeah. people yeah, who I you love so much. Yeah, I did take comfort from it. It's Good. interesting, isn't it? Good. I'll have to work out what's going on with the pug. I don't know what I'm doing. OK, it's break time again before we are let loose with Matt Lucas. Uh, but first... <laughs> Welcome back to Loose for Mid, where it's your love. Now, there's no question that our final guest has a place firmly embedded in the hearts of the British public. Alongside longtime comedy partner David Walliams, he took us under the skin of Little Britain, invited us to come fly with me, and has now gone solo for his latest series. Let's take a look. Get lost, Grammys. Bye-bye, BAFTAs. Darling, this year it's all about the Matt Lucas Awards. <laughs> <laughs> Please welcome Matt Lucas! <laughs> Once, I came on this show once before with David yeah. and they said to us before you go out um, don't greet everybody individually and they didn't say it to me today but oh. and I remember when we went out it felt really rude uh -huh. not to say hello but yeah. when I watched it back it's about five minutes of everybody <laughs> kissing each other. <laughs> so, we don't no mind. kisses. Yeah. No kisses. You want to waste your time, you want to get straight yeah. into yeah. it. Exactly. So, how your are own you? show, how, how yeah. does it feel being you rather than playing a character? Yeah, it's a bit unusual actually, because obviously I'm used to putting on all the makeup and the prosthetics and having David there as well, yeah. but we're on a short break. And, um, and so I thought, well, if I'm going to do something without David, I don't want to try and do the sort of show that I would normally do with him. Mm -hmm. So it's just me as myself, um, no heavy makeup, no costumes, and I've got my mum there yeah. to keep really? things clean. Because yeah. you don't want to say anything too rude if your mum's there. It do really you? is your mum, isn't it? Oh, yeah, yeah, it's my mum. She's very glam. She's just retired, so it was quite nice. Mm. Give Gets her something her to do. Hell. Exactly, yeah. yes. Yes, she's normally at home watching this. Was she, ner <laughs> was she nervous? She was a bit nervous, but she had no reason to be. She's, no. she's a natural. And, um, and so it starts tonight on BBC yeah, One, yeah, 10.35. Yeah. And, uh, and, and what's the format? Well, I mean, is it because it's not your regular chat show? No, it's not really. It's a kind of weird hybrid. It's um, a show that started on Radio 2, um, but we've sort of developed it. We give the awards the other shows don't give. So there's no best actor, there's no best director. Um, uh, we'll give tonight. We're giving smuggest nation of people. Uh, we are giving uh, guest with the greatest artistic ability and uh, most dreadfulest football song ever sung. So I get three guests on. They each give their nominations. Most dreadfulest. I like most that. Most dreadfulest. <laughs> yeah. Poorest yeah. grammar award goes to me. Um, and uh, three guests. They each give their nominations, and I decide uh -huh. what wins. Yeah. Oh. But we get people. As you can see, we get people up and about. And, so and, it's and not are they all sitting, sitting in there. little sofas and little yeah, groups in like, the audience? Yeah, it's like a flat. It's like my living yeah. room. That's is it, is it not your living room then? It's not my. It's actually nicer than my real flat. It's certainly bigger. Yeah. I quite like to sleep on my on the set in front of. I'd like to sleep in front of the audience. Yeah, that'd be nice. Now, speaking of sets, you've been in some fantastic films uh, over the years we watched um, we, well every girl you've watched watched bridesmaids yeah. how, how was that that was great fun you know and because um, uh, I live uh, part of the, most of the year in Los Angeles and but I also have a place here so I, I'm between the two mm -hmm. and um, uh, David and I were just about to film come fly with me right. and I was asked would I be in that film and I said well I'd love to but we're just about to film could, could we do it so that I leave Britain on a Saturday and I'm back the next Saturday mm -hmm. ready to film yeah. or ready to start rehearsals and they said yes yeah. so I just did three days on that film but the girl who plays my sister who really we do look alike yeah. rebel, <laughs> uh, we are actually going to be living together for in real. What? In real yeah, life? Yeah, we just really get on. Oh, We're like brother and sister. Well, let's, so, have, yeah. let's have a little look at the two of you in action. Here's yeah. We can. Yeah. So, in that scene there, would you give the worst taker of instruction that's to right, your yes. sister? And that's yes. what the award looks like the on your, waste on your of frozen show. frozen peas. Yeah, so on the Matt Lucas Awards, this is the Lucas. This is what people win. It's a fat Oscar. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and unfortunately, Brilliant. anatomically correct. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Sculpture. Yeah. Yes, it is good, isn't it? Yeah, the back of me looks it like good. me. Now, it? Does it? Yeah, look, we worked like together. We did. Cheryl was oh, in Little Britain. I was so lucky. Cheryl so lucky in, to work. Yeah. yeah, I was a big fat lesbian. You were. Oh. Yes. <laughs> Cheryl was in a, a scene, uh, Hello Martin, it's Linda. Yes. That David yeah, yeah. did. Um, and we were watching the Lots tapes. Lots of students, weren't it? Lots of students. Lots of students. Mm. And we were watching the tapes and we saw Cheryl and we didn't 
immediately know what we were going to uh, use her for, but we knew that we had to have her in the show. Oh. She had such a great face. Uh, she looked so great on camera. So we did everything we could. <laughs> yes, you did. Yes. <laughs> yes, you did. I can do that. Oh, Let's do it again. <laughs> there we go. Um, so, yeah. But, um, no, it was brilliant. I had great fun. You've done Thank so you. much, though. You, you're going to yeah. be directing as well. You, you... I'm directing yeah. uh, the, the Proclaimers yeah, as well. Yeah, next week. Or the week, yeah. Next week, I'm directing uh, a Proclaimers pop video because oh, I'm such a fan. Yeah. So how good. did that come about? Yeah. So well, I I got to know them years ago, and of course, with Peter Kay, I was in the. Um, of course. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I would walk 500, 500 miles yeah. for for Comet Relief. So they said to me, "Would you be in the new video?" Yeah. And I said, "Well, I would, but I can offer my services as a director." So I've written this idea of um, uh, it's a 50th wedding anniversary party. And um, Craig and Charlie, the Proclaimers, it's a very respectable party, and they play these two old women um, who uh, make a very heady punch. And basically, it ends with all these pensioners getting arrested because they're all completely <laughs> off their heads. <laughs> So, I love it. Yeah. I'm surprised that you've got them dressed up as women. Of course, yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah. so I think they were a bit nervous about it, but oh. I thought, well, if I'm working with the proclaimers, we've got to put them in drag. And, oh, yeah. and talking about dressing up as women, yeah. there's a, 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 the film of the life story of Divine. Yeah. Well, it's, You're uh, in that, aren't you? Uh, well, what it is, is uh, there's a film actually starring Steve Coogan, which Michael Winterbottom has directed, right. um, wow. called The King of Soho. And uh, it's a cameo role, so I just did a couple of days on it as Divine. But Divine was this weird cross-dressing yeah. sort of performance artist yes. from the 80s yeah. um, who was Did pretty you meet him? Have you met him? I never met oh, okay. I was a bit too young and he but he was in the original hairspray movie. Mm, yes, yes. He, was, yeah. he played yeah. the role that yeah. then John the Travolta played yeah. in the remake. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah the mother. Yeah. yeah. Wow, well, good luck as well yeah, with um, so you're comparing a gala event at the Vaudeville Theatre, aren't yeah. you, later this month's That's International right. Youth Twen Theatre, so good for you. 22nd of April uh, at the Vaudeville Theatre, it's a benefit for the National Youth Music Theatre, and I'm yeah. comparing, I'm singing a couple of songs, because I was in Les Miserables last year, okay. so I'm going to sing Master of the House with the young members of the company. Well, well good so luck with on that. 10.35 tonight. Yeah. 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 It's Matt Lucas, everybody. Yeah. Thank you. Today. I hope you've enjoyed the experience, Cheryl. We've oh, really I'm, enjoyed oh, having you. She's done back. really it's well. And tomorrow we are joined by the always lively oh, Nancy oh, Delolio and 80s it. icon uh, Carol Decker of To Power Fame. We will see you all at 12.30 tomorrow. Bye-bye for now.